Hello everybody, I'm Philo with Philo's Garage and today I'm going to show you about driveline angles. Uh, this truck is my Cummins powered F-250 which started life as a two-wheel drive long bed. It is now a short bed four-wheel drive and I've got a measure for a driveline. Uh, nothing off the shelf will work for this because the transmission has been moved back from later for compared to uh, later Fords and uh, well everything's custom. So one of the things that I do to help me, and I've also done uh, to help you visualize at home, is I put a piece of string from the yoke here to the flange. Now this right here is a what they call a companion flange. And if you're gonna have a drive line made for it and you don't have the adapter that goes to a U-joint, you're gonna need to know the diameter of this index, whether it is male or female, and also the bolt circle, which is these bolts going around here. We need to know the distance between two bolts if, uh, if it's a square pattern, or the distance uh, on the imaginary circle it goes around depending on the amount of bolts. I, uh, there, there's a few drive lines out there that just use three. That's why I say that. And then on this end, we need to know what U-joint the yoke takes. Now this setup is going to be a, a 1410 U-joint, which is a pretty big one. Uh, that is factory for this Ford rear end that came out of a 2008 F-250. And then this yoke is aftermarket on my MP205 because it's easiest just to use a straight 1410 jo joint. Um, they make a conversion U-joint where you can get 1410 on one side and 1480 on the other or 1350 to 1410. Um, usually you, you can only go one step in size, the, you know, a 1350 is obviously not quite as strong as a 1410, the bigger the number, uh, the more uh, strength it has. And, and usually they grow in width and then bearing cap diameter. So let's get started. I put this string here and the truck is at full droop. So normal ride height is going to be, uh, this will be up farther and then at full compression it will be up all the way until you know whatever mechanical stop keeps it from going up any farther which on this is the bump stop to the axle tube so if I measure I've got 12 inches from the bump stop to the axle tube so right height is usually somewhere in the middle there depending on what kind of lift you have and some other stuff uh, most of the time I would recommend you do this on the ground flat ground at right height uh, but for the video purpose, put it up in the air, gets a little bit better visuals. So one of the things that you're going to have to be aware of is after you get the length here, which we're going to put this right up here, we are 65 inches. Um, drive shafts, as they get longer, have a lower critical speed. And uh, critical speed is the, it's an oscillation or uh, an RPM where the drive shaft starts to whip, it starts to vibrate. And uh, at that speed, the whipping or the oscillation can get so bad that the drive shaft will destroy itself. Uh, I'm going to put a link down below to a uh, Spicer website that allows you to figure out drive shaft critical speed. But the, the longer the drive shaft gets, the larger in diameter it needs to be to uh, avoid those oscillations. Basically, the, when the tubing is larger, it's more stiff and it vibrates less. And then there's also half critical speed. So uh, half critical speed is, is exactly one half of the critical speed. So if the critical speed was 9,000 RPMs, the half critical speed would be 4,500. And that half critical speed is important because of U-joints. So when you have an angle on a U-joint, uh, every time it makes one revolution, it changes directions twice. And um, so basically, as it goes around, the U-joint is doing this. And uh, when it does that, it creates another oscillation at half the speed. So since it, you know, it changes direction twice, you, would, you have two, and you would divide the, 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 the critical speed by two in order to get that number. And that number is important because it can also have a vibration at that speed. And on a lot of vehicles, that's the speed that you run down the highway at, where it would be most noticeable at, you know, 70 mile an hour, 75 mile an hour. So you need to figure that stuff out, make sure your diameter is going to be good. And most people just say, well, just 
go bigger diameter. Well, it doesn't always fit. On this particular truck, everything is very tight. There is two frame cross members, this gas tank. As a matter of fact, I'm probably going to have to dent the corner of the gas tank to clear just this flange. This truck was designed for a three inch drive shaft probably and a lot less power than it has now. Um, if I went with a 65 inch shaft, I would be right at the, the cusp of hitting critical speed um, with a four inch shaft. I could try and get away with a, with a three and a half inch shaft, but it's not a good idea. So that's one of the reasons I put the string here, because it allows me to put a tape measure, and if I was gonna put a four inch shaft, I can look two inches over from the center line and see how close it's gonna get to this tank. And it's very close. On this particular truck, something I have to do, which I'm not very happy about, is I am going to do a two piece shaft. And those are very similar to one piece shafts. So the U joint angles on a one piece shaft have to be, uh, they have to cancel each other out. And the reason for that is, is a U joint actually, uh, as there's an angle and it's spinning, it, it will speed up and slow down the shaft very minutely. You can't see it with your eye um, unless it's, it's an extreme angle and a very slow speed. But uh, because of that, you need to have the two U-joints cancel each other out. So if you have a five degree uh, uphill angle from your rear end to your shaft here, you need a five degree going down there. And you want to avoid perfectly straight with a U-joint. If you do zero degrees, um, there's nothing to move the caps back and forth for oiling. And it basically just hammers the needle bearings in one particular spot and it destroys the U-joint. And going down the road with the suspension moving up and down, everything moves around a lot. So if that happens, the U-joint will fail quickly. So you always wanna have, I don't know, half a percent, or I'm sorry, half a degree of, uh, of angle on any U-joint instead of perfectly straight. Um, so back to what I was talking about. This angle has to cancel out this angle. Now, when you go to a two-piece drive shaft, you have three U-joints. So in order to get them to cancel each other out, this angle has to equal these two angles. So we'll say we're gonna put one degree between this and the carrier bearing, so that has an angle on it. You don't want very much right here, but you want enough that it, that it oils the caps. So we're gonna put one degree here and uh, for the, easy, the ease of math, and, um, normally I would just say half a degree. I'm gonna put one degree here, and then here, we're going to run whatever is here minus one degree. So if this is at five degrees, we'd be at four and then one, so this side equals five, and it's the opposite of this one, which is five. And there's a couple of ways to change it. Most of the time, the motor and the transmission are gonna go where they go, unless you're building a chassis from scratch. Uh, but on this, the, the, the transfer case cannot go up because of the floor, unless I cut it out. And it cannot go down because the transfer case flange will hit the cross member. Um, and I, I, I suppose I could change the cross member, most people aren't gonna do that. So, the things that we have control over is we can space the carrier bearing down from here, you know, with uh, the starting point being directly on the cross member, we can bring it down to change angles. And then we can also put uh, like little angle shims between the leaf spring and the axle to change this side. We can also adjust the leaf spring hangers or uh, the, the shackle length. That's a good way to do it also. Um, this is a fairly stock truck, so most of it should be pretty close once it's in here. But uh, I won't be checking those angles until I actually have a drive line in here. Um, let's see, what else should I talk about here? Oh, U joint fades. So, as I was talking earlier, U joints create a, a little bit of an oscillation or a, a change in speed of the shaft. So it's very important on U-joints that you clock them correctly. So uh, let's say if you have a single one-piece shaft, um, if the two caps that connect to the, to the drive shaft itself 
are you know on the on a horizontal plane you want them within one degree on the same horizontal plane at the other end um, that's from the NEPCO book that the one angle you know one per one uh, degree is is the maximum misalignment in a perfect world you want them at zero you want them perfectly aligned and this u-joint uh, uh, clocking it also matters on stuff like your steering most people don't realize it but I've seen a lot of hot rods where the we'll say uh, let me put this out of my hand we'll say uh, my fingers are yokes and uh, let's see if I can get it straight here um gotta be a better way to do this there's these are backwards but they're the yokes um, so on a, on a street rod, a lot of times they'll build steering where this one is on a vertical plane and this one's on a horizontal or horizontal and vertical. How, they're just, they're different. And that creates a weird sensation in the steering where it feels notchy because as it's turning, this one's pushing a little bit at the same time this one is pushing and the, the forces are pushing against each other and it gets tight. Uh, I can't tell you how many cars I've jumped in and I felt that and I popped the hood and I'm like, oh, that somebody put the, the, the steering together incorrectly. And, and that can happen on, on a lot of OEM cars. Um, most of them are set up so you can't do that. That's why they use like a double D style shaft. Um, but there are a few where they're splined and they can be put together wrong. And I've also seen it on two piece drive shafts because there is a uh, usually a 16 spline section uh, for a slip. And uh, actually, I've seen it on one-piece shafts that have a have a slip in it, where they put them together clocked wrong. I've seen it happen on uh, front uh, four-wheel drive systems too. Uh, most noticeably, uh, Ford's TTB systems. People will have the U-joints clocked wrong, and then it'll have a weird uh, steering vibration when it's in four-wheel drive, and there's actually a load on those, and they don't slip on the splines as well. So, th anyways, going back to this truck. What I'm going to do is I'm going to order a shaft that goes from right here and then has a carrier bearing that I can attach to this cross member. And then from that, that cross member, it's going to go to the rear end. So I'm gonna end up with a uh, probably a 45 inch shaft and, and about an 18 inch shaft, I think. Uh, and, and one of the reasons for that is, is uh, with this string here, I was able to see if I just ran a one piece shaft, I would have, and it was four inches in diameter, I would have issues where I would have to notch out part of the floor support. Uh, I would probably have to completely remove this cross member uh, in order for it to, to clear up here. And, and I don't, I don't want to do that. So two piece shaft is, is the way I'm going to have to go. Uh, anyways, hopefully you found this uh, video informative. If you have any questions uh, about drive lines or there's a question you want answered, leave a comment below and I'll do my best to answer it, even if it means I need to make another video. Um, until next time, this was Philo with Philo's Garage and uh, I hope you subscribe.